Give everybody a couple minutes to get on here. Looks like the numbers may have stabilized. Having any issues or problems, please feel free to throw a comment in the chat and we'll help you with that. Sounds like somebody still has one of the other breakout rooms. So, okay, we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, I'm Steve Altman with the Illinois Department of Natural Resources Office of Water Resources. Um, you're in the breakout room number three, which is going to contain uh, the topic areas of recreation. Uh, rules and regulation, navigation, and erosion sedimentation. So um, I got B.J. Murray in the room. He's the topic lead for for uh, navigation. I see we have several folks on here. Um, I also got Seth Love, who's also the uh, topic lead for um, yeah. recreation. All right. Are we ready to get kicked off here? I think so. Hear Wes's voice in the background. Somebody oh, must have two windows open. Well, I would like to welcome. Go ahead, Wes. Go ahead, Noah. You go ahead, Cass. I just want to welcome everybody. This is Brent. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, BJ, do you want to give a little intro with uh, your topic area? Some of the things that have been going on. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, BJ Murray. Um, so. Uh, navigation. Um, navigation consists of uh, locks and dams, uh, bridges, um, uh, uh, dredging, and so you know, those are all issues for navigation. And you know, it may be a little cliche, but the the one thing that will really significantly help all those is is funding. Um, as container on barge and and some other uh, vessels come online that are are are, are stackable containers, uh, bridges in some locations are going to be too low. And obviously, uh, a lot of those bridges are old and, and dilapidated. And as funding comes available and these type of new technologies come online, you know, we hope to uh, to be able to raise those and, and provide safe passage. Same way with the uh, navigation and dredging. Um, we try to maintain a, a nine foot minimum draft uh, and, and, and that is continually uh, a struggle with for the core and and need uh, additional funding to to maintain the, that. Um, and in the locks and dams, uh, we, you know, we all t have talked about locks and dams for a long time. Uh, uh, Illinois has over uh, 27 locks and dams, and most of them were built from 50 to 80 years ago. And so uh, those, you know, can only be replaced and repaired as funds are available. So, uh, you know, again, as I say, it's kind of cliche that we say funding is key, but but it really is, and so uh, there's the Water uh, Water Resources Development Act, which is WERDA, and other programs out there. But but currently they just aren't uh, sufficient to to you know keep the locks and dams uh, not only maintained but replaced. And so uh, we seek to find both federal, state, and local funds to to uh, help in those endeavors. So I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, thanks for the update. How about uh, Seth? Would you like to introduce yourself to the group? Sure. Yeah, uh, Seth Love here. I'm a district fisheries biologist uh, with DNR's fisheries division, uh, part of ORC. Um, so basically, as far as the recreation committee goes, uh, we we kind of 
saw three major issues uh, that we thought should be addressed. Um, access, uh, big head and silver carp invasion in our waterways, and uh, trying to increase uh, recreational um, awareness within the state. So as far as access goes, um, currently uh, we're thinking about recommending uh, increasing access points or, or uh, improving current access points like boat ramps, um, you know, uh, maybe paving ramps, that, that sort of thing, um, making those sites more accessible to, to users. Uh, as far as Asian carp goes, you know, uh, not only do Asian carp really negatively impact our e ecosystems as far as competing against native fish species and populations, but uh, they're also just a, a, a nuisance to water users too. You know, they, they jump out of the water, um, they get people's boats bloody, messy, um, they're, they're just a hazard. Uh, so uh, we're preliminarily recommending the uh, continuation of the Asian carp monitoring and removal programs. Um, and then thirdly, with uh, increasing recreational opportunity awareness, um, Illinois has quite a few wonderful waterways that we think are underutilized. Uh, so we, we believe that by increasing awareness to water users, um, these waterways might get used more. Um, Additionally, um, we think that improving or increasing uh, voter safety awareness could also be um, good as well. All right, thanks for the update. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the topic I'm leading. I'm leading the rules and regulation. Uh, we've had several several meetings. We've got a, quite a diverse uh, group on our committee. We've had um, a former um, director for Office of Water Resources, Gary Clark, has been involved. Um, had a lot of uh, environmental groups, including Sierra Club, Prairie Rivers Network, um, Illinois Environmental Council, have all, have all been involved. Um, our, our topics actually evolved quite a bit uh, since the first round of outreach discussions. Um, I, uh, previously, we were seemed to be chasing uh, a lot of different laws, updating, updating laws, regulations, and I think, you know, given the broad nature of the state water plan task force, uh, we serve this, this topic serves uh, a lot of the other topics, um, especially if they have a need for regulation. So um, our, our focus has been, you know, mainly to looking at looking at ways to develop process. Uh, if, if there's uh, with with the current laws, if there's issues where there might be gaps in the current law, how they how they can be improved. If there's um, language in current laws that could be applied differently. Um, we're also looking into that as well. I think we're gonna, you know, we'll provide um, that procedure plus some some uh, examples of uh, considerations for improvements to laws. I think, uh, you know, we're not advocating anything, but it, uh, they're, they're, it has come up in our, in our discussion. I think uh, one of the talks is, is uh, um, that, that we've seen from comments is, you know, including a uh, consistency with other states, um, you know, whether, you know, to see if there's, you know, some way that we can be similar to other states. Um, also seeing where, uh, what, what, it, what it will take to update current laws. So um, the, big, the big issue that we had been dealing with was um, with it cross cuts with SES group is um, access to public waters. Illinois does have designated pub public waters in the state and there have been issues uh, with with um, citizens trying to access uh, access these non-public waters for boating, and in Illinois, that is uh, that that is that can be considered trespassing, depending on uh, what the, what the property owner has to say about it. There has been uh, there has been some uh, legal opinion that has been submitted. Um, the one one thing to note with our public water law, it is rooted in case law, so um, it, it would it would take. We operate currently under the guidance in that case law, and it would it, we would if there's going to be some changes in how how it's interpreted, it would it would likely have to go to court, um, which we're not opposed to. It's just that's where we've gotten our direction in the past. So it's like, um, that's that's a question that's been coming up quite a bit lately. Got a question here? Um, does navigation include issues of low head dam removals? 
for such dams that are out of commission no longer serve original purpose. Um, I guess it could be an outshoot. I don't know, BJ. I don't know if you've had any of those issues uh, pop up for you for yourself. We ha we we have not. Uh, I don't. And I thought I was kind of hoping you would maybe know a little bit more about it, but. Uh, uh, I don't believe any of the ones that have been uh, removed or proposed to be removed are on uh, commercially navigable waterways. And yeah. so I would say that no, it doesn't, uh, does not include that issue. Uh, we do, we do have an initiative. The uh, biggest thing is, is that uh, Office of Water Resources has been involved in dam, dam removal. Um, we've removed some fairly, fairly recently uh, in, Dan in Danville. Um, I know that we're assessing uh, some additional dams uh, on the Fox, North Aurora is one of them. Uh, we're also looking at some on the Rock uh, with Sears and Steel Dam, which uh, actually State of Illinois owns. Um, it, the biggest thing is, is that we do need funding uh, to, to go forward with that. So I think that there, there is an interest in some of these dam removals, especially on the Fox, where there have been several, there have been several that have been removed. I think we're also in the process of removing Carpentersville. Um, but there are many dams on on the Fox, which uh, really don't serve the purpose that they they were built for. So, and and then many 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 places have caused hazards uh, for for citizens, for boaters, kayakers, and people who want to swim. So, I think uh, I obviously come to the water resources, talk to my counterpart in the Division of Capital Programs, Rick Pullman. Um, uh, there's a whole process to do that with regard to um, dams. We only gotten to one question as far as anybody out there. I uh, got a question for uh, BJ, myself, or Seth. Yeah, I'd be curious about any uh, options to get dredging added to like current DNR grant structure. You know, it's prohibited from OSLAD, from the boat access and development. Uh, I, I represent Champaign County Forest Preserve, and we've got our Homer Lake Preserve that was. Originally a state property when they had the goal of getting a, a recreation lake in each county and uh, now we're at a point where it's uh, silted in pretty well and we need quite a bit of maintenance on it, including dredging for, uh, you know, the best recreation uh, use of it. And you know, it's not something that we can really take on of that size uh, locally with, with funding and uh, looking for help through, you know, possibly existing grant structures or, or something new. I don't have anything, but I can definitely pass it off to my counterparts okay. and, and other counterparts within DNR. While I'm on, I guess I'll also uh, jump on the uh, you know, recreation use of waterways that have not been designated as state waterways. And um, not sure, like say we want to develop a water trail on one of those. Um, it, it doesn't really seem possible under the, the current structure necessarily, but do we have to wait for, you know, to do we need to get started and get sued in order to establish that case law? Is there any case law in, the, you know, are there any legal, um, are there any cases currently that might settle there's, any there's, of these issues? There's no cases currently. I mean, where, where are you looking for some type of trail? Uh, the upper, the upper Sangamon River, say between, you know, McLean County and, uh, Decatur or so, or some segment of it. Okay. And also, you know, we're not, I, I, I've heard anyway, I'm not entirely clear that we wouldn't be eligible for a boat access and development grant for a uh, new kayak and canoe access on the river in this stretch due to it not being a designated Illinois waterway. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I can, I can tell you that, you know, the options, um that are available to you may not may may not be i guess pleasing to you it's like i mean you can work with the individual, individual property owners and get get an easement um to work i mean i i understand that uh, that may be very difficult because they could always say no 
Um, that you know that is a challenge. We do have many lakes in this, or many rivers in the state of Illinois that are non-public bodies of water, and it is a similar issue that we have. Uh, we you know Mackinac, there's a fair amount of activity up there. Um, Kishwaukee, there's there's different interest up there, but it, it, they've run into this very similar roadblocks that you've been run to. Thank you. Access grants on non-public streams. Um, that I don't know. I could look definitely look into that. I know that there was some grant money that was on on uh, recently on a Kishwaukee, and they actually acquired and got a water resources permit for. But uh, the issue there was, is it was for a particular area of the Kishwaukee and it's uh, the upstream and downstream property owners were not participants in the grant and they did not want to have kayaking or canoeing done on their property. Let me ask you, is there any, and I, and I, I, mean, I guess I'm saying, I think there should be uh, an effort as part of the plan to address, you know, landowner liability. <clears throat> waiver um, along riparian corridors because that seems to be the biggest opposition because um, most landowners at least from what and I, I'm with the Island Council I'm also a commissioner on Champaign County Forest Reserve Board um, and you know what we're hearing like up on the Kish was that you know the landowners are, are mainly concerned because a lot of the times the riparian corridor properties are not <clears throat> I mean, they're they're fallow, and, and that's particularly true down here. But we have this liability issue. They just don't want people, you know, on the land or hurt on the land or hurt on what could be considered their land. And it just seems to me that you know, if and this is what we talked about with the folks on the Kish, you know, if there were just some good way to grant a waiver or a state would provide that, um, it just feels like that's the right thing to do in terms of like at least clearing the way for landowner. Um, agreements and um so i don't know if that can be included here yeah that 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 is an excellent excellent uh it really does cross cut both with recreation and and the rules and regulations right. i think um you know one of the things that we'd considered in the past was using irap grant and it, it i don't yeah. think it, it apply it's like the there's some uh some language in there that doesn't apply I think that if there we could get something similar that would have that kind of information in, I think that that might be a pathway to do it. How to get that done is the next step. Um, and obviously, I think, you know, um, you know, I, I mean, obviously, this is a DNR issue. It's a permit. You know, a lot of times a permitting comes in with office water resources and then obviously other groups with recreation. I think that's something that we could look into. We also manage the IRAP program. We need to see. Maybe there's a soft spot or maybe there's, you know, maybe it will need legislation to get an appropriation for for uh, something like that at a whole different scheme um, that that could alleviate that. I understand, you know, if I was a property owner, that would be my concern in those areas is that it's not that they don't have an issue with people canoeing it's just that they have an issue for the fact is if they get hurt if somebody gets hurt and then you know then 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 it's an issue i um i think that there there has to be something in between that would be mutual beneficial both to the property owner and to the and, and to the canoeing community i see my I, yeah, yeah about the irap i yeah it's i i we, i got that question in in december and then we've gotten more information saying that they couldn't do it for that. So, um, cause we thought that was going to be our silver bullet and it turned out it was not our silver bullet. So. <laughs> some, uh, anybody else got some, some questions here, right? So it's, this is much better than last night when we had uh, essentially one person on and they had one question to ask and, uh, and it was erosion and sedimentation and, and our guy was not here. So, um, all right. Uh, regarding uh, yeah, um, I don't have all the information uh, 
with with this. I think one of the things to consider is is that um, even though the vermilion up there in the, um, LaSalle County is it's not a designated public body of water. I think now that since we bought out that Buzzy plant, all that white water rafting area is now under state control. So I think that people, you know, within state parks, you can access waters in state parks. It's, it's, I mean, they're not considered a public water, but they are, they can be used for, um, by the public because, because they're state park. And I think that's, that's where it's come about. I know that, and kind of cross cutting, which I didn't mention here, cause I didn't know if it, since this is coming up, DNR, OWR is actually looking to remove that dam they have at that plant. So uh, to enhance that right now that it's like people had to had to portage out and then go around them. But uh, now that um, that they've acquired that plan and we're removing that dam, it should should make things a lot better. I think we're in the and we're starting the construction. Um, maybe I don't, they might just be starting plans on that, but um, I should have that answer. But that's in the other group. So that's something that, that, that could we could be looking for and definitely an enhancement, a big deal with the Mathiasen State Park. more questions I, I didn't want to give us ask I mean since nobody else is and I'm happy not to dominate but the uh, the navigability issue and that in public is I mean that's the, the place in the law where, and in regulatory see where my mind would go because that that definition seems arbitrary to me uh, I don't I mean, I kind of get what it says about how they got designated navigable, and I didn't know if that was in the navigation group, but it doesn't sound like it is because this navigability is what helps to define waterways as public and non-public and, and commercial and, and non-usable. And, you know, and that would seem to be the, the crux of the matter. Um, so I, it'd be really nice if Illinois started to address that and started to reflect not only other states, but also national law in terms of the public rights uh, to waterways. And it really does feel like Illinois is, you know, way behind in terms of how we think about the ownership of, of the water. I mean, that, which is why my mind immediately goes to the land because that's something that you do need to address. But, but beyond that, you know, it does feel like the waters are, you know, publicly owned and it's really the state that's creating this and rather arbitrarily in my mind or in, in my opinion. And I just feel like it's something we need to focus on. And this is a good opportunity, at least to direct attention to it, whether it does anything or not. It's another issue. Okay. Well, I, 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 I hear what you've said. I disagree with you on that because we do have case law on that from the 1870s, which has set this uh, be defined what is navigable within the state. Um, it was a case, I think, I can't remember the name of the case, but it, it um, determined that a, uh, like a fishing rowboat and a gun skiff were not, did not make the waters navigable. So that is the definition that they had. So, you know, with our current, with our current uh, public waters, we've done it off, you know, na navigation charts, what, what the core, um, it's called uh, navigable. Um, we've also, you know, added, you know, there's ways through the legislature that you, that public waters have been added. Um, what, what was, uh, I'm drawing a blank here, but uh, there, there has, there has, there have, there's been many opinions, um, but um, we do have law, uh, case law in place. And I think, I'm not, you know, if, if the law changes, then we will adapt. I think, that, you know, I think that's, that's the thing. It's it, the courts have weighed in. And I, and I think that's where, I, I think that's where it comes in. Granted, it was a very long time ago that they weighed in, but they did weigh in. So I, you know, I think that there's been a lot, you know, this is becoming really becoming, you know, one thing that we've seen, there has been a lot of bubbling up um, uh, that, you know, with the com canoeing community, a lot of these questions are being brought up and these are all good, good things to be talking about. I mean, there's, you know, especially with Illinois, we're looking at ways to, you know, I know Lieutenant Governor's, uh, um, her committees, the coordinating committees were, were at, that I'm also involved in is, is that they're really looking at ways to promote Illinois um, 
you know, and, and with tourism. And this, this could be a way to do it. Cause I think, you know, some of these rivers that don't qualify as public bodies of water are very right. favorable to canoers and, uh, you know, being able to sell that, maybe it will come up with a change. You know, it's, it's something that, um, that, you know, need, needs, needs further discussion, you know, this, and this could, you know, state water plan task force, this could be, you know, a recommendation we have for, um, for my particular topic is, is that, you know, to keep this conversation started and look at, you know, what ways can, 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 you know, we get it into it. It, it could be introduced into law. What, what, you know, where the, maybe the, um, where, where in the, where in the act, maybe that needs to be revised and what it would take. Um, right now it's, you know, we, we operate OWR the way we do, um, you know, and there are places in the state that, you know, that we haven't explored. We haven't got, gotten those questions yet, but, you know, I think it, it you know, I just mentioned Mathison. I think that it's, that's going to be nice because that was a big headache was, was the buzzy dam where he had to port out and he had to walk your canoe like 200 feet and then, you know, put it back in and get back in the rapids. And then now, you know, we're, the state took over that area and get it out. So it's going to you know be able to go all the way to the Illinois. So let's see. Okay. Let me see. Thank you very questions. much. I'd be interested in being a part of any of those discussions. We'll do. That's enough. And right. I just, uh, this, this is BJ Barr. I was going to jump in and just tell Scott that, the, that, that we have just recently completed our um, Illinois Marine Transportation Systems Plan and Economic Impact Analysis, and it is out on our IDOT website. And you, when you talk about navigation, one of the things we struggled with uh, using the term navigation throughout the document was that we went back and kind of made a distinction of what was commercially navigable uh, and, and what we defined it as is, was what the core controlled and, and, and dredged. And so, yeah. so we made reference to commercially navigable as opposed to navigable because most lay people would think that navigable just means that if you can float a canoe down it and it's, that's not necessarily for commercial right. navigation. So anyway, just throwing that out for you. Thank you. Okay, there. Um, uh, Robert had a, had a question. There are currently no recommendations for the water quality or erosion sedimentation subcommittees. I'm not aware of these subcommittees have even met. Will the final plan be published without any discussion of water quality? This seems to be gross dereliction. Um, yes, we can. I can definitely talk uh, talk amongst. I'll talk to Wes. Talk to Lauren. Uh, talk to. Um, talk to uh, Brian Renneker about what's going on with them. I, honestly, I'm not involved with them, but I can definitely uh, pass, pass on the, the comment to them, uh, you know, by, you know, biologically swimming uh, stream designations and fishable and swimmable waters um, and take it to that end. I, all good, all good points. Um, honestly, it's just like, I, I can tell you I'm lead, I'm leading this discussion, but there are some areas that quite frankly, I have blinders on because I'm an engineer that deals with floodplains. So and public waters, but as far as the water quality, I think that these are good questions, and we can, uh, I'll, I, we can. This is good avenue. We can bubble those to the surface, and we can pass those on. Okay, we got about another ten minutes, I believe, um, or thirteen minutes. Uh, we got more questions. This is good. Uh, Steve, we um, have a, a Cross River landowner who. Uh, they're, they're getting undercut on the bank a bit, and they, they've kind of indicated that they think that we should be responsible for uh, removing log jams and uh, debris that may be contributing to the, the course of the river toward them. Uh, is there any current state uh, guidance on, on those issues or a possibility of something being developed? Okay, this is uh, this is really in my wheelhouse. Um, log jams, uh, you know, you can you can remove log jams, but if you also have to once you remove them and touch them, you own the impact. Um, we, you know, we I, I think you know that's that's a you know concern and like being able to point fingers at saying who's who's doing that unless. You know, we get these kind of questions all the time, and unless you can prove that somebody was doing that, and then say, "Hey, you know what? You're putting fill in the in a floodway." Um, you know, trees fall down all the time and they create log jams, and you know that's you know one way to, and you know it changes the river system. 
once you go out there and touch it, then you own the impacts of what may happen of that. And, you know, it's, you know, if you're an adjacent property owner, um, my, are you a DNR, Michael? No, I'm with the County Forest Preserve District. Um, I think if if I were you, I'd be, if, once you touch it, then it's like you could own the responsibility of it. And I can tell you that if, you know, you were coming to, if someone came to DNR, because we get this all the time and say, hey, there's a log jam, DNR, you need to do this, or, you know, or we want to do this, what do we have to do? Well, technically, when you do that, it is an activity in the floodway, and we regulate that. And one of the things we say is, is that if you are going to do that, that's fine, but make sure that you take everything out of the floodway and then, and then you know, make sure you're not causing, causing a potential imp impact. And a lot, what, a lot of folks are what they want to do. We've, we've had this discussion several times where we, people want to do this. Oh, we just want to win row on it on the bank. And we're like, no, that doesn't work. It's, it's like, we need, if you're going to do that, do something engineers to show, show that it's not, you're not going to have a problem going downstream. Um, I, you know, they, you know, I would, I would say try to work with them on that. But if, you know, if you're, if you take it up, I think that you're probably going to have more folks doing the same thing with it, with you. And, you know, keep in mind that, you know, nobody's going to go after you. No one from the state's going to, going to, you know, be um, going after you to do this. We're going to be concerned once you touch it, um, which is not bad, but make sure that, you're disposing of it properly and you're not putting it in that floodway prism where it could float and cause an issue somewhere else. Okay. Along, along those lines, a volunteer group I work with, you know, there's been debate about whether it's appropriate to cut bush honey and suckle along the banks of the river and allow those to fall into the river uh, due to any issues they may cause downstream. What's your take on that? Um, I mean, you might you might want to get an in, you know a uh, environmental opinion on how it could affect you know could affect water quality may not cause any issues. Um, that's you know another thing is is that if you're cutting and putting in the river, that's filling in the river. So you know it may flow down, but if you're knowingly doing that it, and somebody sees you and and it's just like then then there's going to be. There could be there could be a regulatory issue, or it could be a liability issue for that matter. You know, we you know trees do fall in rivers all the time, and they a lot of times they create jams, and a lot of times it's like I can tell you we've had places where people have cut down a whole bunch of trees may have been years ago, and then they got a big flood, and then they brought it down. We couldn't definitively find who did it. Um, that, that's why, you know, I think a lot, a lot of this stuff bubbles to the surface once we have like a big flood or have a big rain event. I can tell you, you know, I've got personal experience. I know there's a big, uh, big rainfall event in, uh, in central Illinois, not too far, you know, not too far away from Springfield, um, near Taylorville, which where I'm from that they had, um, a big, you know, they had a lot of, uh, there had been some logging done in the floodplain. They don't know who did it. They have some suspicion, and then it caused it caused a lot of uh, um, debris issues where they, they had this case and took it downstream. The problem is, is that um, they were doing it at the time, but we didn't know exactly who was doing the clear cutting. And it's like it was, you know, it could have been a violation at the time had we known all the parties involved, um, and then we would have told them to dispose of it out of the floodplain. But once we have a flood event, it gets a lot tougher because, you know, it's like we don't have a, you know, criminal, uh, um, we don't have a CSI group within OWR to ca capture somebody like this. So it's, you know, it, it's it, everybody starts pointing fingers at each other. So, you know, that's the kind of situation you have to deal with when you, when you're, um, cutting, cutting trees, putting stuff in the, into the stream is, is that you could be causing an impact somewhere else. And, uh, we we recommend, you know, if you need to clear cut trees, take it out of the river, out of the river prism where you you, know, you could be causing a flooding impact to somebody else. Yeah, I appreciate that on the Illinois Council website. We have a water trail keepers program and we talk about, you know, maintaining 
you know, safe passage through deadfall. And a lot of the guidance that we're providing is just to cut it so you can get enough passage with a boat without having it, you know, being sucked under. But yeah, we we we're actually not saying what you just said. So I think that's important. So I mean, I think we really need a lot more guidance and information uh, so that we can pass that along in the appropriate way. Yeah, it, it's it's something that the one I'm thinking about is, is that there had been a big uh, tree cutting operation. Uh, another one uh, was right when I came back to OWR where they'd done some up on near on the Sangamon and it, it, it created a huge, there's a huge log I've jam up by Sa bot Sanginoy. But the problem is, is that they, they, you know, they wanted to remove it, but they, they didn't want to, they didn't want to remove it. You know, they wanted to move it. They didn't want to take, you know, there's a levy there. We said, you need to take it out of the other side of the levy and dispose of it. I'm like, you can't leave it in the system because what's going to happen, you get another big flood and it's just going to throw it downstream. Yeah. And, and, then, and then we know who did it. You know, it's just, it's it's one of those cases. It, it's just best to, to try not to try not to put things in the stream system because it's like, you know, if somebody knows that you did it, then it could be a problem. And if it's a policy, then, you know, there could, you know, I mean, yeah, that could be liability outside of what, what would be in our range at OWR. You know, we, you know, we yeah. regulate the streams, but, you know, we have run a permitting program. We have violation program you know, or violations that, you know, come from that permitting program. But um, when it comes to, I mean, if you're talking about real damages, like if, say, if some flowed down and it broke a bridge, you know, tore down a bridge and people knew who did it, then then that could be liability that could be put on whoever did that. Okay, any more questions since we're getting thanks everybody for coming. I appreciate this. We this is uh in getting quite a diverse group. Yep, thanks for the opportunity. No problem. Again, if you got some questions, pop them in the chat box. We can answer them. You can and uh, uh we will have this recording i'm recording it right now it'll have a transcript of everything that we say we're going to put that on our um on the dnr owr website or the state water plan task force after this uh after this week we get them all loaded up so um you guys will have that available to you as well and if you wanted people to hear some of this conversation we had you're more than welcome to point them to our site If you guys want to head over to the other, uh, the other, uh, the main page, you, uh, feel free to do that. Um, I'll st I'll stay here probably for another three minutes until uh, this is over, and then I'll see you on the other side.